afternoon and welcome to Blues Budgeting Live. And today we're going to be talking about the top 10 ways to summer and heat proof your home and yourself and your pets and all of that kind of stuff on a budget. So um, I want to just, um, let's just sort that out there. Right, real good. Okay, so um, we've just experienced two of the hottest days in British weather history. Now, as an Aussie, I who has Aussie mates and Aussie family, and I've heard all the jokes that there possibly could be under the sun about this. However, one thing that there are several factors that people don't understand and as much as Aussies are used to the temperatures that we've just had for two days the UK isn't now normal temperatures in the UK for summer around about 20 to 25 degrees and in on really hot days it's around about if they don't get close to 30 there is about 28 degrees celsius okay so over the last couple of days, we've had anywhere from 30 at night, at night, to in our garden, it was about 47 degrees out there. Now, the other thing is that um, the Met Office and other temperature takers that for the weather service tend to have their temperature gauges um, thermometers in the shade they don't tend to have them in direct sun so i know of people who were checking their garden thermometers who were getting temperatures that either went off the scales of their garden thermometers or around about 52 degrees celsius which is absolutely horrific even in australia it's horrific the only time that i have ever known australia to get up 50 and plus was a couple of years ago when Sydney was literally surrounded by bushfires and it got to 52 degrees, I think, in about, in a couple of parts of Sydney at that stage. But they had to be completely surrounded by bushfires for that to happen. And it was recorded as the hottest place on the earth. So, you know, people are picking up those temperatures in their gardens, off their garden thermometers. It's a little bit scary when you're living in the UK. Unfortunately, of course, this has caused lots of bushfires and all sorts of stuff over here. People putting out little barbecues, little throwaway barbecues. They think, oh, yeah, I'll just stick that out and forgetting that their grass is tinder and causing all kinds of fires, throwing them away before they're ready, really cooled off or before they've put them in water or anything like that, just to completely cool them off. Um, and, yeah, so half of London was burning. There's been fires breaking out all over the country up here in York as well um you know and people just in general not knowing what to do when there is a fire or like a massive heat wave or really really hot weather in summer hi Al hi Sika how are we doing I hope you guys are well so what I thought I'd do I'm, I'm actually working on a very um very in-depth video on this subject actually where I am actually talking to some professional people as well who are on the front line um, emergency services. I'm talking to a few different people about this and getting their take and I'm going to go into things a lot more in depth but I thought it would be really good to do the live this week so that people can be prepared because obviously it's going to happen again you know we're going to have um, you know, it's, it, it's going to happen again. It happened last year. It wasn't as hot last year, but it is, you know, um, it is going to happen again. It's happening more and more. So the idea is to get yourself prepared. And I want to teach you guys how to do that on a budget, you know? So is it hot down there? It's cooler and rainier here now. Yeah, we are overcast now. Our top temperature is going to be on Tuesday, and I think it's going to be 25 degrees. But every other day up until a week today is supposed to be anywhere between 20 and 22. So that's not too bad. We have been promised rain. I haven't seen it yet. 
You have found something good in the weather. That is really good to hear, Zika. What have you found? What did you find? I have to admit, my seedlings went ballistic. And if you guys have seen my Instagram, it's um, my, um, you know, my bean plants went from underneath the soil to five inches tall in three days. Three days. I was like, what? <laughs> It all makes us all hot stuff, even me. Oh, see, look, there you go. See, we're all hot stuff. Okay, so one thing we have to remember, I saw your babies. Yay, they are really good. One thing we really have to remember living here in the UK is that the houses are built to keep the heat in because of how severe the winters can be. They're not made to let the hot air out. So we have to find a way of counteracting that. And some of those ways can be very, very expensive. The chili exploded in that weather. Yeah, all my seedlings did. All of them, they just went form. So hot air rises. This is something that we have to remember. Hot air rises, cool air comes in. Okay, so what we want to do is make sure that all the windows upstairs are open to allow that hot air somewhere to go. You, you, you've got to... You've got to have your, if you have an upstairs, let open the windows. If you have windows that are split, that have smaller windows at the top, bigger windows underneath or something like that, open up those, okay? Get those so that they letting the hot air release so that you've got more room for cooler air to come through. Um, opening up doors and windows are great, but you're letting in the direct light. Now, this is where we have an issue. Okay, so one of the one of the cheapest and best things you can do because you probably already got them on your windows is shut all your curtains, shut them. If you have a wall in your house that allows to, where the direct sunlight hits every single time, shut those work curtains. It stops the direct heat coming in. Yes, your bricks and stuff are going to heat up, but it's going to stop the direct heat coming in and making it worse than it already is. I open the windows, but I shut curtains to keep the sun from shining through the windows too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's it. Absolutely. Open your windows, shut your curtains. All right. That's one of the cheapest, easiest, quickest things that you can possibly do. Most houses on the inside are going to be anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees Celsius hotter inside than outside. So um, your pets, your kids babies, etc., need to stay cool. Um, if you have, it's all very well buying cooling mats, and I bought one for my cat, but the thing is that you have to remember that cooling mats, A, number one, only last for four hours, okay? Then you have to move your dog or your cat to reset the thing for four hours so that it can actually they can go back to it. So you only want to put it down for the hottest part of the day if they're willing to sit on it. The other thing is you don't want to have, have them for pets that chew things. They're filled with a gel that actually expands and there've been quite a few um, unfortunate pets that have passed because they've been chewing on the cooling mats. Um, cooling mats, I have one for the cats. <laughs> Just give me two seconds and I'll fetch it. Right. <clears throat> Ooh. Okay, so this is a cooling mat. <laughs> Obviously, it's much bigger than my cat is. All right. <laughs> oh, gosh, what did I just do? What did I just do? Oh, good God. I don't know what I just did. Okay, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so this landed on my thing. So this is a cooling mat. Your dog or your cat, hopefully, will sleep on this bit. But it does have little things inside it, little plasticky bits inside it. They can get stuck in their esophagus if they're chewers. And they do expand as well. So you don't want them swallowing that because that stuff will expand in their gut and can explode their intestines or cause blockages and all sorts of things. They are relatively cheap. You can pick them up for anywhere between 15, 20 pounds. 
my cat used it once i wouldn't bother seriously i wouldn't bother she she used it one time and it had to be on the hottest part of that day and she used it so she could have a bath and then she went back to the kitchen floor because obviously that was cooler and more comfortable for her so you know some use it some don't now i believe um the guy from lad baby is being called a genius at the moment because he bought a whole heap of those and stuck them in the bed he might be a genius for two two seconds you know but he didn't take into account they only last for four hours and when the temperature at nine o'clock at night is 30 degrees they're not going to last um for very long so you know it might work for a little while but it won't last all night and what will happen it'll just heat up and heat up and heat up and you'll just get hotter and hotter and hotter and it's just like do you know what bugger it don't what don't worry about it it's putting the cat in the fridge i'm not putting the cat in the fridge the food's in the fridge she'll eat it <laughs> yeah so um yeah so he's being called a genius but like i said he's not uh that clever but you know if it gives you a couple of hours of you know a little bit of cool then yeah i suppose it's not a bad idea but you know it, it's lumpy and and stuff and it's not that comfortable to sleep on so anywho right so the next thing we've all got plastic bottles around the place or we've got glass bottles or whatever around the place drink bottles all that kind of stuff fill them up stick them in the freezer if you um okay give me a second give me a second so some places have been saying to fill up plastic ziploc bags and stuff with water and fill those up to stick in the bed what you can do with the plastic bottles which you probably already have um is actually stick them around the bed and stick them around the kids and it'll actually cause like a little bit better chill um you know that that was you know that that's a better thing is if you've got them like underneath their arm underneath a leg maybe in the small in the back not by the kidneys so because you don't want to chill out the kidneys because the kidneys can go and go into shock and you don't want to cause that but if you can put them in spaces where you sweat the most it tends to cool the body down maybe at the foot of the bed underneath the feet probably one of the best place to put them took my dog to the river gave her a swim had to she wasn't enjoying it at all i completely understand darling completely understand um one thing that i will say about dogs and dogs at the moment and it has literally had me in tears sitting here at my office window watching people walking their dogs on the concrete outside in blazing sun and thinking oh yeah you know it'll be fine half of the dogs were pulling against their leads they didn't want to go they were trying to tell their owners they didn't want to go and the owners weren't listening and it was horrific to watch and i'm pretty sure that uh, many of you who watch this channel have probably seen pictures of what happens to dogs if they've been on hot concrete and what happens to their pads it's not pretty it's not nice you know um it literally blisters their pads and the skin comes off and it, it's absolutely horrific um you know and if I could move faster, if I was me in my 20s, they would have got an earful like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> I would have been chasing them down the road. Um, but basically, the rule is this. If it's too hot for you to walk barefoot on the concrete yourself, don't make the dog or the cat do it. Don't do it. Um, also try to keep your animals indoors. Big sign outside the house. If you're going to walk your dog on concrete in this weather you should be barefoot too yeah that, that that's yeah yeah very tempting very tempting problem is that like dogs and cats do overheat very very quickly and one of the best and easiest and quickest and cheapest things to do is get one of your bath towels soak it in cold water and get it on the floor let them lie on that honestly let them lie on the cold on the on the wet towel 
because it will cool them down very, very quickly. You don't want to put them over them, just underneath them, let them lie on that. When it came to my cat, she was, she wasn't touching the water. She wouldn't go near it, but she would pace around the house to different spots where obviously it was a little bit cooler or a couple of degrees to cooler for her. Um, probably every 20 minutes she was walking around. And as soon as the fan was on, she was under it where the, where the air drops from the fan. She was right underneath it. Um, so that, that was really kind of cool because she knew what was going on at that point. But, you know, the other thing is don't make your pets go play indoors. Here I am, was busy answering comments on my channel from you. <laughs> Thanks, hon. <laughs> How you doing, Dawny? Okay, so the best thing you can do for your animals is to make them a big, deep, dark cave. Okay, get yourself a big cardboard box underneath the dining room table where it's nice and dark. You know, make them a little cave. Put the food and drink down there so it doesn't overheat so much because it's not in direct sunlight. Let them find a dark, cooler space in your house that they're happy with and make them a little cave in there that they can chill out, yeah? Don't make them play. Put the toys away for that couple of days where it's unbearably hot. Put them away. Don't make them play. You can They can overheat very, very quickly, and it is not nice. It is not nice. My cat used to sleep under the privet hedge in hot weather. Good girl. Don't leave banknotes on your dashboard. I have a five pound note melted in this on the dash now. Would you believe the sun melted? I believe it because they're plastic. Wow. That's that's incredible. I had a friend who their kids had left a can of drink out outside. And it had been left there all afternoon. And he was sitting out there and he was listening and it, you could hear this plink plink noise. Okay um and couldn't figure out where the noise was coming from saw this can thought oh yeah i'm gonna i i suppose i better take that in and it exploded completely exploded all over him all over the back door all up the wall could have been worse could have been one of the kids could have been in their face so you know you don't want to leave stuff like that out there you know um by the cat's water squirt guns no way great topic blue mine keeps laying stretched out long but with their bellies towards the sofas yeah 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 they do i mean bless them you know you gotta remember that these guys have got fur coats on you know i want them we, we don't work for sort fur coats you know we're, we're stripping off left right and center now this brings me to another hot topic here with this okay um when you're going out, strappy tops are not a good idea. If you're on 30 degrees, 30 degrees, you have a 10 minute burn factor. Okay. That means it gives you, you have 10 minutes until you turn into a lobster. Okay. So what you want to do is have a lightweight muslin type cotton shirt that you can put on over the top of your strappy top to try and cover your arms and your back and your neck. If you do have long hair like I do, it can get very sticky, very um, wet and just, nah, okay? But the best thing you can do is have your hair down. And I know it sucks, but you know what? I've got mine in a ponytail at the back. It protects mine, helps to protect my neck so that the back of my neck doesn't get but because you don't want that to happen. <laughs> the pebble split in two with the heat. I saw that. How scary is that? Intense heat messes up my filming, lads, cicadas, even filming indoors. Yeah, yeah. I totally get it. Um, so, yeah, try and if you are going to be outside, I know the first instinct is to strip off as much as you possibly can but try and be as covered as you possibly can in a comfortable way. So if that's floaty, light cotton um, or light linens, wear those, you know, because they will help. They actually help to blow in air up your arms. And if you're in a skirt, up, up your skirt. Um, but also it wicks, it works as a wick. So 
it'll drag the sweat off your body and it will wick it down your body, which will help to actually keep you cool, which is why people in a lot of hot countries actually wear long sleeves. The hair thing I get, but I have hair up as neck. Cool, but yeah, not outside. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, having having sensible clothing is a really, really good idea because the amount of people I saw, I saw an entire family of lobsters walk past my house the other day. Mum, dad, and two kids, red as you like, and it's just no just don't do it it's not good it's not safe it's not sensible you will end up in the hospital <coughs> all need to take siesta like mediterranean companies now outside when pos yeah i mean me i the hottest part of the day up here and this this took a bit of getting used to because i used to live in the south down in devon and obviously even further south in australia and they hottest part of the day is anywhere between 12 and 2 o'clock four hours north up here in york it's from four till eight o'clock it's not that far away but the hottest part of the day is between four and eight o'clock in the evening so it takes a bit of getting used to and you need to learn about what time of day that is yeah all say so hot and then lay out on the beach all day yeah exactly um so you know making sure that you're not doing as much activity in those times of day is really really important so you want to find out what your hottest part of the day is for your area and where you're living so that you're not doing things in that time even if you're not having a nap just chill I was wearing a thin white t-shirt when i was working but i got burnt through it because it went slightly transparent through sweating and i got burnt through my t-shirt so wearing a top that's thicker yeah by 8 a.m too hot to go out now here no evening cool down temperatures sleeping in terrible yeah it's better than very thin yes it is it is but anything is better than nothing and if it's you know but like this this is a winter weight t-shirt i wore it because all my other ones are in the wash <sighs> And I have a fan here, so I'm not going to overheat. And it's only 20 degrees today, so I'm not that worried. Okay, but, you know, you don't want to be wearing this on the days that we've just had. Outside work ban during July and August every year, not just in heat waves. That's in Cyprus, just so you guys know. Okay, that is something that's really, really a good idea. Now, one of the things that um, I wanted to talk to you guys about as well is your freezer is your friend make your freezer your friend now we all get um warnings at least a week ahead of any major heat wave that gives you enough time to fill an entire shopping bag filled with ice in your fridge now I was doing this myself. I did do this myself. I just bought these from Wellco's. You get two for 175 or something like that. I bought them while they were on sale. So I've got four of them. I've also got the one that came with the new fridge and I've got an old one, an old metal variety one, which just has a lever to click, click the um, ice out, um, which I was using as well. And I was refilling them and emptying them into the bag twice a day. So first thing in the morning and last thing at night. And we ended up with an entire plastic carrier bag full of ice, which we still have. We still have some of. And I was literally filling up this glass here and it was melting entirely into a glass of water within 20 minutes. That's how hot it was in here. So having that ice is really, really important, really, really important. Um, but it's not going to cost you the earth to do either. And to be honest, if you go into charity shops and stuff like that, you will find these generally in the 10p or free, free boxes that they have there because, you know, who wants them? No, no they, people think, oh, no, they can't. You know, so just grab as if you see them, grab them while they're cheap. You know, if you're around a charity shop or something like that, go and go and check them out, go and pick them up, get as many as you possibly can. 
I laid them out on a baking tray, you know, like a cookie sheet. So I was able to get four on a tray and then I could do another tray with the other two um, ice, ice cube trays on it. And that made such a difference. I know it's really cheap to buy the ice cube bags, but if I have the ability to make the ice, I would rather leave those bags to people who haven't got that ability, who have got like a little bar fridge with a tiny little freezer. I'd rather leave the bags for them than for, you know, than fill up my freezer with bags of ice that, you know, at the end of the day, um, I could have been making on my own. Yeah. Wetting, wetting your wrists is a good way to cool down too. Ice is a great instant cool down for sure. Makes a big difference. Makes a huge difference. Now talking about ice. Now, these fans here. There's a lot of places have been saying put a baking tray or something like that or a bowl of, of water in the freezer and then put it, once it's frozen, putting it in front of your fan. It won't actually do anything if you put it in front of the fan. Okay, it won't because the fans work to drag the um, air from the back and push it out the front. So what you want to do is if that is your only option, is you want to put it at the back of the fan, find a way to put it at the back of the fan and it will draw that through and push it out. Okay, the other thing that you can do, so I'm going to just, oof, turn this around a second. Now, if you've got an old wire coat hanger and a couple of individual, like, pop bottles, all right, so just soda bottles or whatever, you can, if, if you've got the bigger bottles, just cut them in half, take the, take the top bit off, okay? But you want to make, like, a hook-type attachment that will go around the bottle and hook here around the bottle to here and hold it in place. OK, and then you want to want do one on here as well, because you want it to be balanced. All right. Those bottles of water that you've got that you're going to put on there, you want to put them in the freezer and you want to have them so that they're frozen. If you're if um, you can get them on eBay, darling, and they're like 10 for a quid. Poundland has them. Pound Stretcher has them. Yeah, I, I just grab one of them or. Any old wire, if you've got wire, old cables, anything like that, that will tie it on safely and securely, use what you've got, okay? Just nothing that's plugged in because no one needs that kind of, no, we don't need that. Right, so if you've got a big Coke bottle and you cut it in half, you fill it up with ice cubes that you've got in the freezer and then you can re-freeze re it into the ice cubes afterwards. All right, but it will work in exactly the same way and drag the cold air from the ice through to push it out that way. So, yeah. So that's one thing you can do. So um, some kitty TikTok peeps have done it inside the blade cover and electrocuted themselves. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we don't want any of that happening. So please don't plug in anything that you've got, you know, Blue is great for info and advice. Check out some back videos too. Oh, Donnie, thank you, darling. Okay, so we've all got to eat, right? We've all got to eat. Now, as I said, we've got about a week's notice before the really heavy, hot weather usually hits. Now, I would make the suggestion of... Um, um, as to have them, this one we got from Wilco's, I believe but you can look at them online as well. Um, they're around 20 to 30 pounds. But I would suggest to you, wait until about Christmas to get one. They'll have them on the cheap. Amazon have them on the cheap. They take the price down because no one wants a fan at Christmas, not in the UK. So grab them while they're off season. Anything like that, anything you want to get when it comes down to cooling systems or anything like that, um, grab them when they're off season because they will be a lot cheaper. But yeah, Asda, um, Argos, 
Sainsbury's have had them. Morrison's had them. Um, you can get them on eBay. You can get them on Amazon. Yeah, Amazon. All of that kind of those kinds of places. Okay, we got this one just before Christmas, and we got it marked down. It only cost us fifteen quid, and it was I don't think thirty two pounds or something like that. So it was like, yeah, we'll have one of those. Thank you very much. You know, or if you put your 30 pounds aside, because that's what you think you're going to get, get two. And I'll tell you why you want to get two. All right. Because this is really clever. All right. You've got your fan with your Coke bottles on the back that are filled up with the ice. All right. You get your other. You get your other one, your, your second fan. And you get it near a window and you stick it facing out the window because what it does, it'll drag the hot air straight out that window and give room for that other fan to push out the cold air into the room. So you're going to get rid of the hot air quicker and get that cold air going through a lot faster. So that's what you want to do if you've got two fans. Yes, there's a character limit, 220 ice cubes in a clean cloth bashing it with a rolling pin put the ice in a bowl then i put sliced melon on it ate melon then cool thawed water and orange concentrate in a glass yum me squeezing watermelon adding drinks with lots of ice yes um sounds great growing tons of melons in prep for our hot summers in cyprus yes exactly oh 200 yeah okay i don't know Two, 200 to 20 i always go over it I, i'm i always try to get all the information in and i can't do it i'm very bad okay so that's what you want to do if you have saved your money you can get the fans on 50 percent discount or something like that get two instead of just the one and have one pointed out the window dragging that hot air out while you've got the other one with the coke bottles attached to the back of it pumping that cold air in and that's what you want to have because then you've got your airflow happening. Okay, so that's one really good thing. Now, I haven't yet done this because oh, when I got the stuff, the heat actually hit and had already kicked off my fibro and my hands were not working properly. I couldn't even pick up a glass of water. Okay, I was in a very, very bad state when the hot, water, the hot weather started. Okay. So what I'm going to show you, I'm going to explain to you, all right, and when I actually do the video, because I am actually going to do a very, very in-depth video on this, okay, because this is a very important subject that I think people need to know more information about because people in this country really don't know how to look after themselves in the sun, okay? So what I have, so I have 10 metres, oh, gosh, that's shiny, 10 meters of Velcro, sticky Velcro strip, okay? This, this cost me nine pound, all right? Yes, it's a bit expensive, but what you'll have, you'll have forever, if that's what you want to do with it. What I also have, which I've been saving up to put in my garden, by the way, to make brassica cages, is some black, scaffolding and debris netting okay now this cost me 25 pounds for 10 meters okay all right so yes it is a bit expensive to start off with all right but what you do is you get your velcro strip and you put it down the sides of the window frame okay then you cut out a piece of this and you stick it on the belt, you put the other part of the Velcro strip around your edges and you make yourself a screen, a screen for the windows so that if you have elderly animals who you don't want to get out like our cat, but you want to have the windows open, you can do it. Now I have the black because for some strange, very weird, magical, thing it does it goes almost invisible in the sun so you're not going to see it you can salvage the netting from buildings yeah, sites if you can talk to the builders there because they are worthwhile talking to okay we have had 
scaffolding debris man netting in the past that we've got off a building site once they were done you can get it for nothing and then you're only paying for the velcro strip also check in your charity shops because sometimes um they will have not probably all of it but they'll have pieces of it so you can use what you can get okay but this works you can yeah you can do it with net curtains as well but um the problem with the net curtains is that they're easily ripped by cat claws this isn't so you know if you want to have something that's a little bit more permanent you can do this all right um yeah but that is one of the things that i will be going into when i when i finish this video now the video is going to take me a good couple of months to do because i'm actually talking to people from the ambulance service the police fire brigade um i'm hoping to talk to the vet i'm pretty sure she'll be happy about that i'll be talking to my doctor um he's agreed that he would be more than happy to talk about it i'm also going to see if i can talk to one of the um a and e so the accident emergency emergency doctors down at the hospital um as well because they've all got different information they've all got different information and it's all information that is really desperately needed at this see cat won't rip the curtains if it's cooling in the fridge i know but it's not cooling in the fridge <laughs> so yeah so i'm going to go in depth into those and i'm going to talk you actually in that video through making the screens so because you know at the end of the day we don't have screen windows here you know it's one of the things that you have in australia that you don't have here they're even useful like just for keeping the insects out you have the windows open you're going to end up with flies and all sorts coming in you don't want that they're going to stop the insects from coming in if nothing else you know um so that's a really really good one to use as well like i said and as dawn has mentioned you can get them off building sites strips of um scaffolding debris netting for nothing um or you know just buy some fresh if that's what you want to do i just find that the stuff that they have on the building yards which is usually the green or the blue or the red is a little bit more in your face but if that's what you want that's up to you so i'm kind of happy using the black because it like i said it goes invisible for some reason it's great i mean they do have it in white so it would look like a net curtain if that's the way you want to go that's entirely up to you that's cool right so here's one that's actually going to save you money cut down your alcohol consumption all right it's oh, it's all right to have one or two beers or it's all right to have one glass of wine or whatever you know but you know what cut it out have some infused water instead all that's going to happen with the alcohol is you're going to end up more dehydrated which means you're going to get heat stroke or heat, heat stroke or heat exhaustion quicker and it's going to make you sicker longer because it's not fun so cut down on the alcohol consumption try and just pack it up with water you know add some herbs in it add a bit of fruit in it just whatever you want to do to make it you know whatever you've got chuck it in the water but just try and keep the alcohol consumption down to a minimum i know that the um is that someone coming to my door guys i'm i'm just give me a second i've actually got delivery hang on <laughs> give me two seconds oh good. um yeah so okay sorry about that <laughs> i have no idea what this is i don't have any idea oh no it shouldn't be i don't know anyway not part of the video right 
Peeps need to know the difference between heat stroke, sunstroke, and heat exhaustion, three very different things, causes and remedies. Yes, they do. And that will be covered in the next video, in the video I do on this. I'm not doing an unboxing live, not here, not right now. I will do a video, so I've got one for Saturday. <laughs> okay. All right, hang on. Getting dry. <laughs> Okay, pretty soon I think air conditioning will be sold commercially. Someone out there will jump on it, on this at some point. Um, yeah, I we bought ourselves, and it was an investment. It wasn't cheap. I'm not going to lie to you, it was not cheap. Okay, but we bought ourselves an evaporative water cooler. Okay, it also cleans the air as well. Um but you can put water and ice in the bottom tank to push out air. Like I said, it was an investment. It was not cheap. <coughs> it was about 96 pound. But again, it was something that was an investment. Okay. But using the tricks that I've shown you with the fans, you can get a similar um it is it's got an air, air purifier on it as well yeah hey janine how you doing darling it's good to see you sweetheart it does have um an air purifier in it as well yeah but yeah so but it's also an air cooler so it's like a little portable air conditioner we could take around the place they do cost a bit more to run than a fan a fan will cost you about 15p for the entire day whereas the air cooler will cost you about 60p for an hour very very expensive to run but you know if you can afford that and you can put that money aside and you put that money aside then go for it All right, I'm actually getting hot in here. It is warming up in here, guys, so I'm just going to put my fan on. Well, I would if it was plugged in. Why isn't it plugged in? Oh, no, what am I doing now? Oh, my God, give me a second. Holy achievers. Oh. Okay. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. It's probably going to be longer than an hour, guys, because um, it's... um taking me a bit longer than normal and I'm a little bit all over the place right okay try not to knock things over there we go oh bliss okay that's bliss <laughs> that's instant that's instant bliss okay so I hope it's not too loud for you guys I have got it on the minimum um but that's as far as I can get it away from the plug <laughs> Loving your info, Blue, off to get my video made. No worries, darling. Thank you for being here. I do appreciate it very, very much. Okay, so we do all have to eat. That was one thing that I was getting to. We do all have to eat while we are going through a heat wave. We don't always want to eat. We don't want to eat a lot. And we certainly don't want massive, great meals or heavy, overly cooked roasts and stuff like that they go out the window what I suggest you do is before it hits okay get yourself things in that you're either getting from the garden so you're making yourself salads etc if you need to get any cooking done try and get it done before the heat wave um, or if you absolutely can't do it either do it first thing in the morning very, very first thing in the morning. I mean before 8 o'clock in the morning, okay? We meet up. That's what I mean. Or last thing at night. So after 8 o'clock at night, then do your cooking there if you need to do it because at those two points in the time, you can actually cool off a lot quicker and cool the house off, all right? Leave your housework alone. Do you know what? No one. No one. Gives 
a flying dead rat's bunghole whether you vacuumed your floor or not during our heat wave. Okay? Leave it. Leave it alone. Don't bother. All you're going to do is overheat yourself. Okay? Leave the washing. If the washing is that desperate, do it on a cold wash and get it outside and use the sun to dry it out. Even if you haven't got a garden, put it on a clothes rack or something, but don't um, <laughs> a flying pot. You heard me the first time. I'm not saying it again. But just get it on a clothes rack or hang it over a door or something like that. But just don't bother putting a dryer on because if you put the dryer on, you're going to heat your house even more and you're not going to be able to get that heat out. You know, don't bother. Use the sun to your advantage, okay? Right? So no one cares whether your house is clean during a heat wave. Trust me. However, I am aware that there are some households that have to keep things a lot cleaner because of children who have special needs or low immune systems and such like. Do it first, either last thing at night or first thing in the morning. Probably first thing in the morning, I would suggest. You know, that's probably the best way of getting it done so that you have time to cool off before the day begins or before you go to bed, okay? Make the shower your friend. Make the bathroom your friend. Seriously, if you have a bath and you can't get cool, go and sit in it with a pillow because I'll tell you what, that is one of the coolest places you'll find. It's one of the things we did as kids was we'd go and sit on the tiled floors in the bathroom with a book and a pillow and just cool off in there because it really was the coolest part of the house. I know bathrooms are a little bit different now. They're not quite the same, but you will get a very similar effect, at least for a while. Okay. So um, if you've got kids that are going to school or if you're going to work and you take your lunches with you or they've got to take their lunches with them, get everything you possibly can that's freezable and get it in the freezer. Get them little insulated lunch bags. Get them into those. Um you know, and it will help to keep them a lot cooler and to keep their lunch from going off, all right? When you trip up over the dust, it's time to vacuum. Yes, right then and there. I slept on my tiled kitchen floor on a thin sheet and a pillow, which helped exactly, exactly. If you've got a tiled floor anywhere in your house, use it. You know, the other thing that is suggested is that you actually sleep on the floor rather than sleep on the bed because it's down low and that's where your cold air is going to be okay so that's always a good idea too if you want to get the mattresses out have an indoor camping trip with the kids you know i'm home are you still alive i am still alive darling i am alive and i am life yes here i am here i am okay so what have we got now so yeah use the freezer to your fullest advantage okay that's that's the best that I can say. Ice cubes, frozen drinks, cold bottles of water, frozen bottles of water that you can put in your beds to cool the sheets down and around the kids or yourself if you're getting overheated at night. You know, just use it. Making ice cubes for your fan to put behind it, you know, or if you do have an evaporative cooler, make extra ice so you can dunk cupfuls in the water because it's really, really useful. Okay, so we're going to get two pet treats. <laughs> it's good to know you're still with that. Yeah, I'm still with you. I'm still with you. Right, so pet treats. Now, there's a little bit of a bone of contention about pet treats. Um, yes, too much ice, too much frozen stuff will send a dog into shock. However, a frozen banana, a couple of ice cubes, uh, a, a pup, pup cone from the Mr. Whippy Ice Scott cream guy is not going to harm them um, unless you give them all, all, all at once, okay? Just one thing. Choose one thing, you know? Maybe some water. I mean, like, dogs are great because you can pretty much feed them almost, almost anything, almost. There are things that you can't, obviously. So you don't want to get a chop top for the dog, for example. 
okay but maybe some watermelon from the fridge they would really like that what i did for the cat was i got a tin of tuna and i made them into ice cubes my cat is about it cares about as much of stuff like that then she does about whether you know i'm still breathing the only reason she cares whether i'm still breathing is so that you know she gets food she really didn't care she didn't touch a water bowl she wouldn't touch it and i mean she barely drank the whole time now she's drinking but she didn't drink then okay so that was interesting that was that was kind of an interesting thing but you know i did put frozen ice cubes of tuna out because i thought i was being a good cat mama and she didn't care so you know i think it depends on the animal really when it comes to birds you want to spray them make sure that they've got like a little bird bath or something in the bottom i know it's going to cause more mess but you know what i'd rather have a bit more mess than a dead bird so you know right okay so i think we're pretty much i think i've been through pretty much everything you know i mean okay so there, there's a lot of things that you can do for next to nothing you know to use the resources that you already have to make do and and you know try and keep your house at a more reasonable rate keep you in a safer situation when some okay if you you want to when when you're looking at buying things for your home for summer or for yourself for summer you want to be buying the stuff in winter or at the end of summer sales when everything is marked down okay you mark that stuff down you can then go in and buy it 30 percent off 50 percent off 60 percent off or in the grab five for a quid kind of box okay definitely check on the elderly in your area check on the vulnerable people in your area um because they are the ones who are going to suffer most uh also um hoses first thing you want to do is chuck your kids under the hose please don't do it without pouring the water out first the other on the on the really hot day on the tuesday it took me a full six minutes to run my hose until the water was literally just what i would call room temperature so that i could get my plants watered if I had put that water on a child, it would have had third degree burns and been in hospital. Okay, so don't just don't just blow hoses of water over kids because it is or even adults. It's just it that water burns like fire. And the amount of incidents all day Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday, all I heard were sirens going past my house, ambulance and fire brigade, ambulance and fire brigade all day long. Those guys were slammed, absolutely slammed. Now, it, it the first things that we always want to do um, when it comes to summer days is go out, have a barbecue, strip off you know, have a few drinks. And you know what? They are the worst possible things you can possibly do on the days in a heat wave. In Australia, and I know we're not in Australia, but this is a country that is used to having bushfires and fires and stuff like that. If it gets to 35 degrees, they call a localised fire ban. All right? It could be a statewide one, depending on where you are living and how bad it is. Um, yeah, there were a couple of grass fires here, darling, down in the park. Yep, because of people with throwaway barbecues. I think I, my personal opinion on throwaway barbecues is that they should be banned. I think they're absolutely dangerous. They are asking for fires to happen. They are. I mean, it's a roasting dish for a turkey at the end of the day or, you know, a chicken or something that you throw away at Christmas, you know, and yet they've got paraffin-loaded charcoal briquettes in them to cook your food with and they're loaded with the paraffin because they don't put enough charcoal in it to actually cook the food so they are burning hotter than the dish that they're put in can safely be used at 
because it'll burn straight through. And the first thing it's going to do is catch the grass. So if you are going to use them, I would suggest putting them up on a table with preferably something stone or metal underneath it. Um, but get it off the grass if you are going to use something like that. So many fires around here in the south east and where my in-laws live in Bedfordshire. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, it, it's just been awful. I mean, people take them down, down the park, it's just stick them on the grass and just think, oh, yeah, it'll be fine. But no, five minutes later, the whole grass has gone up in smoke because it's tinder dry, which is why Australia has fire bans when it reaches 35 degrees because everything is tinder dry, you know, um, and you're not allowed to have things like that because one spark could bring down an entire forest, you know, or an entire town. And people don't realize this because they've never had to realize this before. And that's the issue. It's things people just think, oh, yeah, I can do this, this, and this. And actually, no, no, really, you re really, really can't. You know, there are things that you need to do to make things safe. Okay. So, yeah. Um, if you are going to cook, like I said, try and keep it first thing in the morning or last thing at night, preferably first thing in the morning. That way you've got a little bit of time to actually get that excess heat out of the atmosphere inside the house. Um, and you can have a chance to cool off as well or do the cooking a few days before and just have cold meats and salads and things like that. So it's not going to take a lot of energy. It's not going to take a lot of work on your part. You don't want that mm -hmm. extra heat or anything like that to occur. Good grief, what is going on here today? Get, do you people not know who I am? I'm busy working, stop it. I hope we don't end up as hot as the end of Oz. Well, you know, no, well, you know, I it, you never know what's going to happen. But like I said, some, okay, so, my one of my my biggest biggest tip of all is okay buy your stock up on sunscreen and after sun and all that kind of stuff fans anything like that summer weight clothing burn um burn kits all of that stuff you want to you want also want to update your um first aid kit to include burn kits etc that kind of thing anti-nausea cut treatments um instant cool mats you want to have um you know the um oh gosh the foil blankets okay have foil blankets in there too you know the ones that they give to the people who do the marathons all right have a couple of those in there because if you get someone who has got heat stroke or heat exhaustion or anything of those, you're going to want to wrap them up in that because they will can get um, hypothermia and you don't want that to happen, okay? So you want to wrap them up in that blanket, all right? And there are things that you can do to help if someone has got a severe burn due to water damage or sun, etc. cetera. Um, and I will be talking more on that during the video um, that I will be making. I am in the process of making at the moment. The video has gone from something that I was just going to put together to something that I am seriously working on as a project. So I want people to be prepared for this kind of weather because it is really, really important. Those hand warmer things that you put in microwave, etc., in winter, put them in the freezer instead. You can do. Or you can get gel packs. You know the gel packs that you put around a, um, a swollen ankle? Yeah, get a whole heap of those and chuck them in the freezer. It's getting around your neck. Even a clot, even a cold, wet flannel around your neck is going to do you some good. If nothing else, get the washing up bowl and some cold water and stick your feet in it. Okay? If nothing else, do that. Your feet have all the main veins of your body going through it. If you want to quickly warm up or quickly cool down you make sure that your feet is where you start because it will pump straight back up 
through your body. So if you want to cool down quickly, you put your feet in cold water in a bowl and it will cool you down faster than anything else. Okay. It's why in winter, we if, if kids have colds or anything like that, I always suggest putting Vicks or, um, you know, deep heat or something like that on the kids' feet with the socks on because it will heat them back through and bring their temperature to a decent temperature if they've got themselves a um, midwinter chill or something like that, okay? It really, really does help, okay? There, there's so much that you can do, and it doesn't all have to cost the earth. You know, I know things are rough for everybody, and things are about to get rougher, and I get it, but there are ways of protecting yourself, your home, your pets, your loved ones, your property, and being able to do this without having to break the bank to do it. And I hope today that I've been able to give you guys some ideas on how to do just that. Um, these are all things that we've done in Australia for different reasons at different times. Obviously, things are there are a little bit different. Um, you know, so I have breathing problems, especially in the heat. If it gets too bad, I put my head over the open freezer and take a few breaths to hydrate and cool the lungs. Yeah, whatever works, mate. Seriously, whatever works. You know, if it works, do it. Absolutely. You know, but yeah, but we are at an hour now. I thought we were going to take it a little bit longer than that, but we are an hour. So what I'm going to say is thank you so much, guys, for being here. I have appreciated your company today. I hope you've I've been able to give you some really good ideas um, on how to protect yourself, your home, yourselves, your pets, your kids, your properties, and make life a little bit more um, survivable during a heat wave um, or through the hottest part of summer because these are all things that you can do during summer as well because we all still get hot anywhere between 20 and 25 degrees. I mean, we do, let's be honest. Um, and I just really hope that I've been able to help you guys I will see you so later on, okay? I love you guys heaps. Have an awesome, awesome rest of your day. Stay cool. Stay safe. Bye for now.